Episode 150 of In the Field. Join me out in Coronado where sunset's disappointing, but twilight is delightful. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport, and we made it to episode 150 of In the Field slash In Post. Uh, it seems to, it was only uh, yesterday we were talking about episode 100, so this is pretty cool. We're still going here, and uh, you know, again, really appreciated all the support that everyone has shown. The questions that keep coming in, that's the stuff that fuels the show, and that's what helps keep me coming back week after week. So I encourage you, please keep that up, and uh, you know, tell your friends. But, uh, most importantly, just you know, keep getting value out of this. If I'm not giving you value, let me know about it so that we can all become better photographers together. So this week, I uh, got out in the field and went to Coronado, which is uh, just on the opposite side of San Diego Harbor. I hadn't been there in a couple of years, which is why I wanted to go there. I uh, decided I would go shoot the iconic Hotel Del California. Anyone who's a film buff will remember it from one of Marilyn Monroe's films, Some Like It Hot. It was you know, kind of featured in the film quite a bit. And so um, it also was near the ocean, so let me get my, my ocean fix. So I was really hopeful for a, a good shoot, uh, and you know, sunset didn't really pan out that way. Uh, let me show you what I encountered while I was out there. Standing just to the north of the Hotel Del Coronado, this is my subject for tonight. I've chosen this for a couple of reasons. One is I have not been down here in a long time, I'm talking years. And also, there's nothing going on in the sky, as you can see. So this is sunset's about, about 45 minutes away, given that bit of cloud cover there. But as the sun dips, it's going to light up the hotel pretty nicely. I'm going to find myself a composition, get myself set, and really keep the tripod fixed. And so once the sun goes down, I'm hoping that some of the lights will come on in the hotel property and I can take a shot so those after sundown and blend those together in post to get a little bit of a, you know, extra you know, gleam or glitter into the shot itself. So I'm seeing these uh, rocks in the background here kind of beyond this this white fence if you can see that here. I'm gonna head over that way and try and use those as some level of foreground interest for the hotel itself. It doesn't work out. I'm just gonna get closer and make it all about this beautiful structure. There is not too much in terms of foreground subject here that doesn't put me too far away from the hotel itself. This little portion of beach here is not bad. Tide's rolling in a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be enough to get like an interesting reflection or anything of the hotel itself. So I'm going to wander a bit more north and see about framing up and kind of just making it about the hotel. I don't want to lose you know, the, the, the classic dome there. The farther I go to the south, which would be this way, I'm going to have you know, less and less of the dome being obstructed by some of the other structures there. So I want to go farther north and get more of a uh, kind of like an angular uh, V shape where I've got the, the long stretch of the hotel itself leading up into that you know, beautiful, iconic dome. Grabbing a couple of test shots, but nothing special here, and I'm still struggling with foreground. This is a beautiful, beautiful hotel, but I've got to find something a little bit more interesting to get just in the front part of the frame. Otherwise, I may switch up entirely, go to a longer lens, and just grab a uh, more close-up select portion of the hotel. So right now, just shooting at f8, pretty standard, low ISO, just grabbing a few different compositions to, uh, to help my brain process this scene. I've grabbed a few up and closer shots using these and tents and chairs and so forth, some foreground elements, just some context. They're blocking a fair amount of the hotel itself. Although the hotel's already starting to fall into shade and it's still a good half hour before we're gonna get some really nice golden light. There is a lifeguard tower behind me if I pan around here. I'm gonna walk over to that and give this one more shot as maybe a foreground element for the backdrop of the hotel itself. Just as uh, again, it will be the subject will become the lifeguard tower. The hotel will just become the context for that particular subject. All right, I've got about 15 minutes before I lose the light, so let me make this brief. I have decided to use the lifeguard tower as my foreground element, and uh, I'm framed up. You can kind of see from here, roughly like this. Got the lifeguard occupying the right portion of the frame, and the hotel down in the background, just for context. There's going to be a fair amount of, of blue space up there. I'm just hoping for a nice, rich blue sky, so that'll be more uh, negative space as opposed to dead space. Moving over to the camera here. Zoom in here. And something I'm doing that is different, at least for me, I'm shooting at f4. 
And why am I doing that? Well, the hotel is pretty far back there. It is providing context for my scene. It's not my subject. So I'm going to throw that out of focus a bit. Now, as the light gets good, I probably will also take some shots at F8 and maybe F16, but I'm going to keep my focus point right on the C that's in the lifeguard tower. Let me see if I can switch back to manual focus for a minute. And if you can see this point right there on the C, that's where I'm focusing and at F4. So we'll just go ahead and lock that in, switch to manual, and I'm going to dial in my, uh, my micro focusing after this. And that is going to be it. I'm going to take some shots and see how things come out. I have already lost light on the lifeguard tower and most of the hotel is in shade now. I'm just going to keep the tripod parked. It's probably going to be another 20 or 30 minutes. You can start to see some of the ambient light coming up on the hotel. I hope that uh, accelerates so I don't have to stand out here too long. It actually is already getting chilly. Of course, that's uh, San Diego chilly. For the rest of the world, it's probably quite warm. The, the sunset didn't work out. The light wasn't there. I struggled with getting a good composition. Uh, the lifeguard tower, you know, while interesting, it, in conjunction with the hotel, all in all, it just wasn't coming together. I, I do want to show you a couple of the photos here. Um, just kind of highlighting something that may not have come through on video where I was really trying to work the best balance between this tower and the hotel. And so as I arrow through, you're just going to start seeing particularly trying to get this spacing right, you know, subtle changes just between things. And, you know, it was really trying to hone things in. I finally settled around here and then said, all right, let me just start firing off the shots because at this point, you know, the light's kind of already gone from the tower. The, the hotel isn't lit up very well. It was cloud cover starting to grab the sun. And uh, in one of the footage clips, if you saw it off in the distance where I was, you know, toward the sunset, that's actually sunset cliffs on the opposite side of that, you know, jut of land. And that was going to swallow up the sun, you know, earlier than sunset proper. So I think, you know, to, to get a better illumination on the hotel, I'm going to have to go out there at a different time of year when the sun's not going to be setting behind that landmass. And then, of course, hope for some clearer skies. Now, what I didn't have footage of is after the sunset didn't happen, uh, you know, it's starting to kind of just, you know, collapse the tripod legs and say, all right, time to, you know, time to start heading back. It's, it's not going to happen tonight. Thankfully, I kept the camera on the tripod and just walking back up toward the hotel. I had sat long enough to wait for dusk and start getting some of the ambient uh, and artificial light mix happening with the hotel. And as I got closer to the hotel, I was like, oh, you know, this, this actually is turning out to be pretty okay. So a few more photos from that dusk time. And these are a lot nicer. You know, it's just a nicer, richer blue. And it's like arrow cost, you know, I had just a couple of playing there. Then got closer and said, let me just make it all about this tower here. I, I like the scene. Um, you know, I got a couple of folks just sitting on the bench. They're relaxing. And one more where people are moving through. I like this because I, I, I have a feeling I might do some blending between these two. So I like the story of these folks here. And then the blurry figures, they disappear as I move between different scenes. So um, I think I might be doing something with those two shots. And overall, that kind of was uh, was the salvage of this outing for me. The tip of the week is don't give up. Don't pack it in too early, especially if you're somewhere that after your natural, beautiful thing is uh, done, you might find a structure or a man-made thing that is going to get lit up at dusk. That could become your secondary shooting opportunity. So don't give up too early. You may find something that still you can come away with. Um, something you'll be happy about that you're glad you, you know, cut off your couch or got out of your house or whatever it might be to go out with your camera. And that wraps up this week in the field. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, share this with a friend. Uh, anything that uh, you do on social media is always appreciated. Really like that. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.